And we're live. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 163 of Fans of Power. I'm Joe Amato. I'm here with my partner in crime, Tyler T. Rex Baker, and Nasty Nate Kennedy. And what's going on, guys? Well, why am I not a partner in crime? Oh, shit. You know, I'm mean, a shoot. Um, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I think I'm going to have to change that. I'm going to have to start saying my partner is in crime. Yeah, I never thought of that. I mean, no, basically, right. yeah, you guys. Know, no, it's fine. It's fine. You can you can cast me out. That's, that's totally fine. <laughs> cast- yeah, and I got to think of a better nickname for you too. But first, let me say before oh, we get into this stuff. called Nathan back in high school. He deemed himself nasty Nate after watching Half Baked. Well, then maybe I don't know. We'll see if I keep that or if I give him something else. But before we get started, I did want to say hello to everybody. Just that's kind of like ignored that what I just said. He's like, <laughs> I, I want to. I want to be. I want to be Boopy too or something. Give, think, me, give, give me think, one of those neighborhood nicknames, Joe. Or Snuggles. All right, I might get. That's it. I might get you one because, yeah, that's it, Tyler. I think he's probably thinking, well, Joe's got to give me one of his names. So, yeah, I'll think of something for you next week. Well, T-Rex wasn't wanna... that original to begin with anyway. You know, it's not like you – know... Oh, man, now he's disregarded. I thought it was cool, no, man. I'm just, I was saying, like, started... like, I'm just saying the name is fine, but you, you act... <laughs> so, like, it's got to be like this really well thought out name. And... I mean, no, Del- not well thought, Del- but Del- it's got to be dubbed. He's got to Del- be dubbed suggested... or do the Mr. Kennedy thing for me. Maybe that would... Uh, I didn't want to rip off wrestling. But first, let me just say hello to everybody that's been in the chat room before we started. We got Delva78, Febmon, Zentron. Uh, I'm scrolling down. Oh, we got the dogs out. The dogs are out. All right. Um, I'm still scrolling down. I want to make sure I didn't miss anybody, so I'm sorry about that. So I'm still scrolling. I'm still scrolling. Nathan might know somebody if I did miss anybody. Uh, Grimbot's here. Zen Brown is here. I'm going a little down more. A little, um, oh, somebody new, Dave Dynasty. Thank you for joining us. And I just want to see. If, oh, Adam Gabbert and JSP, Jason Jones. And uh, now I got everybody. Okay, good. I don't think I missed a single person. So before we started, I one of the people here in the chat room did send you guys something. So I figured you can acknowledge who it is and show what he got you guys. I, it, it, Tyler, well, Tyler's got to actually take his out of the envelope. So I guess I, I opened mine on Friday's. Sorry about that, Delvis. But uh, Delvis78 was uh, awesome enough to draw his own vision of us. And uh, here's mine. There's, the, of course, the pony that's in the background right here is in the picture. There's me uh, cursing and say... I'm gonna I'm gonna blame it on the blame it on the alcohol. Or I was gonna say I was drunk because uh, for those of you that don't know, on the Beyond Retro channel, I've started to live stream video games. I did Donkey Kong Country. Uh, Joe was giving me crap the entire time, and I guess he he just broke me. I died a lot on levels, and I'm like, you know what, this is it, and I shut the stream off. And uh, also, I don't know if this was intentional, but this is a Ham's beer shirt, and I don't know if I ever wore that on beyond retro or anything at all but i actually do own that shirt so thank you that's cool i I, I still need to get a frame for it but i intend on doing that that is awesome and i can't wait to see tyler's and also final fury comic thank you for joining us new to the chat room so now we gotta see what tyler is he's doing a live on enveloping huh yeah this is uh completely unopened I i have no idea what's in here so uh we'll get a live response here Let's see if it's a gigantic ego head or something like everybody always says. Let's see if it's a really big ego caricature or something. Uh, You know what? I'm going to let you guys see it first before I actually look at it. We'll do something a little different here. Okay. Uh, You got to lift up and to your left. There we go. And then just kind of say something. All right. All right. I'm I'm talking here. That's. It's exactly what it's exactly what you would want. You're going to like it. Yeah. Yeah. He man, he man with the crew cut here. Yeah. <laughs> that's genius. It, just, it looks like that's a tank top and not a harness. That's awesome. A tank top shirt that looks like a harness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It does look like a tank top. Yeah, he did a good job. Yeah, you got to show that again and say something. Yeah. That's kind of cool. Let's see here. Just yep. Yeah, you yeah, see it yeah. all right there? It's good stuff. <laughs> I still think it would have been funny if uh, the head would have just been like, taken over the rest of the paper yeah kind of surprised it didn't happen there or you know <laughs> it's awesome. like your your head is detached from your body because it's like a balloon and just got so big that it just floated just kind of has a life of its own just kind yeah. of floats around yeah yeah <laughs> thank you very much Dale. that's cool yeah that's awesome man they'll they'll both look awesome in a frame so there's a quick little story but uh behind that too if you want to hear it no, uh, not Delvis, really, but... <laughs> He's like, not forget it. He's like, let's move on to the, let's talk about the character spotlight. No, um, Delvis sent me the picture of Tyler first, 
and he showed me that in a black and white. And what he did was he just he took a picture of a black and white. Oh, I, 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 we're getting there. That that mic is about to break on you. I feel like. God uh, dang it! All right, hold on. Now I'm gonna hold it so it doesn't do anything. Bam! It's not rubbing nothing. You can hear me good. Yeah, I can hear you now. I, but, it, but it was starting to go, and I was like, I knew it. I called it. And I know why it was. It was touching uh, my laptop, and when I was moving, it was rubbing it. Ah, okay. Gotcha. All right. So, so let me move back. Okay. So he sent me that picture of Tyler, and it was just a picture he took. Then I took that picture, and I colored it in, and I said, what do you think of this? He's like, oh, man, that's awesome. And I was like, well, you know what you should do? I should. I said, send it to him. I was, and he was like, what, you want me to email? I was like, no, just send him a physical copy or something. That'd be kind of cool. And he said, well, I don't have a scanner or a printer or nothing. I said, okay, well, then how about you take another good head-on straight picture, and I'll do some cool Photoshopping because I wasn't quite sure, like, how he wanted the hair and stuff. So I altered the hair, mm, excuse me, altered the hair, colored it, heightened it in, and I printed that out, and I sent it to Tyler. But it's from Delvis. Now, okay. also with Na now, also from Nathan, I added the hams because I went through all your photos on your – I stalked you on Facebook. And I found a picture where you were wearing a ham shirt. And I was like, this is perfect. He already put in the Jesus. text about right. you being drunk. I'm officially so creeped I, out now. I, I knew that it, the mob hit's coming, isn't it? It's right around yeah, the corner. Yeah, exactly. So so since you were talking about being drunk during that stream, I was like, well, this is a beer shirt. So I did that, modified some stuff, altered it, colored it, printed it out, and sent that to you too. So, And then he was like, well, Joey, he was like, man, you did all the work. I was like, Delvis, I didn't do nothing. I said, you're the one that drew the picture. I said, I just colored it. I said, any idiot like me can color a picture. But just to let you know, yes, I colored, I altered, and I sent them both to you. So he did amazing work, and I just had to color them because I thought it was just fun to do. What are you looking at now? You're trying to find an address or my handwriting? I put his address. It is from yeah, well, his no, actual I'll, address. Yeah, you know what? Now that I see the postage paid here, it does it does have parts unknown written on here. There you I'll go. be damned. So now I know what your handwriting looks like. <laughs> it's bad, isn't you it? You can hire someone to like I'm going to have Joe's to turn it into the FBI at some point because they're going to be like, yeah, he was just you know, sending all these letters to people before he sent out the mob hits. And I'll be like, I, I got your match right here. Yeah, because believe me, I'm guy. sure he would have, if he could have printed, I'm sure he would have printed them too, but I just got some cool stock and I printed them out and I thought they would look cool framed in case he was just going to email them to you or however you want to do it. I was like, well, I'll do that. I'll color it. I'll print it. In. So there you go. Well, Joe, I appreciate uh, you doing that and the, the collaborative effort put into this and making it happen. Now, Joe, uh, did you uh, call in uh, favors at the post office here or did you uh, uh, use money for this? Yeah, um, we, I used money, you but about, you know. well, yeah, exactly. I used money, but since it was just you know one of those padded envelopes, it was kind of cheap, so it didn't cost yeah. me really anything. So oh, there yeah. you go. How about that? The All price right. is on there. All right. Yeah, yeah and then someone else off Ed Bond makes a good point. Your fingerprints are on here too. So you guys got me now. Yeah, definitely, you got me. And even though what else was that? Uh, uh. Oh, they're making fun of my technology. And Delvis said Joe was much nicer. He said he was going to color you, Nathan, to look more like Shaggy if you look at the outfit. So I guess he had Shaggy from Scooby Doo in mind. I, I, I mean, I, I may as well embrace that. I, I know I got the look. It makes sense. You do. Well, and I want to show s something to somebody else that hopefully is watching, possibly. But I found something in the. Hold on. I know my microphone might rub something, but. I was going to show my carded anti-attorney man at arms that I met, uh, made for him. So I did the card. I made the card. Uh, the figure's got a cool paint scheme. I know it's probably kind of reflecting with insanity now. I know you probably can't see it that well, but did that and then gave it like a slightly eight card back design to where I added anti-attorney man at arms, also with man at arms on the back. But I told him, I said, I'm going to show you a carded figure that I made for you live. I'll do that right here on Fans of Power. So there and it's it's like you said if i want to show a custom one so i'll do for a custom you know a customer i'll do that so figured i'd show it i mean i'm still all for the idea of uh making uh having own, own little separate videos for you to kind of take more time and maybe talk a little more uh, about your process yeah now. i just okay. i don't I, i'm not gonna whore myself that bad but i also want to say hello to chris paulson chris he's a paulson, cheap whore yeah, I'm a cheap whore. Chris Paulson in the chat room. Thank you for joining us. But I also want to acknowledge one other person, uh, somebody that was on Facebook. I posted um, 
I redid and altered and colored uh, one of those maze games from, or, or whatever, board games from one of the coloring books of Masters of the Universe. There was one I did before. I did a new one. I posted it in some of the groups. And then somebody um, new actually commented. His, na his name is Darren Bloodworth. He said, hi, Joe. Just wanted to say thank you for all the things you do in the Master Masters of the Universe wise. He said, you're a legend and you make me laugh all the time. I live in the UK, so I never get to see the Fans of Power podcast live, but I always watch it the next day. It's fantastic, and it's the one thing I look forward to every week. So once again, a massive thank you. And I told myself I was going to shout out, and that's pretty cool that you know he enjoys listening to us, you know, do our discussions every week. So yeah, it's, that, that you, still Jim. amazes me that uh, people just actually look forward to us just talking about random things. I, I'm I'm saying more in regards probably to like Beyond Retro and stuff like that. But uh, uh, yeah, it's still strange to me, especially hey, we're, not, we're not a professional setup here. We're just three guys sitting in, you know, various dwellings. And that's that's really about it. So to, for, for people to be willing to devote their personal time to sitting down Sunday nights or sometime during the week to listen to three guys talk about He-Man just talking like we don't have <laughs> special effects or anything like that. And no, <laughs> no transitions, just um you know, it, it does put things in perspective. Like it's, it's no editing. Flattered. And yeah, exactly. Horrible video quality that you see for me. But another thing, which is a little bit better if you'd look, and I do have to watch this microphone when I rub it, but my tablet finally took a dump, my old tablet. And of all course, I let Nathan. Face. Yeah, yeah, basically all <laughs> over my face. But yeah, and see, I'm going to my avatar. That's how bad it is. Sometimes I still go to that, and I'm thinking it's just the internet quality. But yeah, still, I, I, the, I really think it's it's your internet now. It is my internet is probably it's just as bad as everything else I have. But <laughs> at least the visual quality, even though I'm still jerky here, it's it's still a little bit better. But I told Tyler and Nathan, I said I'm gonna have to go to my laptop for this episode coming up here. I said because my old tablet's done, and then I get uh. I was talking with Nathan. I'm giving him a hard time about his video game play, saying how bad he was. And then he's like, "Hey, you might want to check your mailbox." No, I well, like, no, I was like, hey, no, you were you were like, "Hey, when you when you doing Batman Returns? What time? I need to know. Is it gonna be is it gonna be tonight? What time are you getting off work? Are you, are you gonna have time to do this?" I'm like, "Joe, I'm probably not gonna get home until like 1 a.m. I don't think it's happening tonight." Well, when are you gonna do it, man? Just let me know. I'm like, I'll let you know if you go check your mail. There, okay, so that's how. So I go to the mail, and he's been rambling about, I'm going to get you some headphones, and I told him don't do that. So I go, here's a mailbox. I mean, in the mailbox, here's a big box. So I then left him a voice mes message live. I'm like, oh, here we go. So I ripped open the box, expecting headphones, and this sucker bought me a tablet, and it, it pissed me off. And he could tell my voice went from being angry, but then saying thanks, because I, like, I was like, these things ain't cheap. And but Nathan just I, I, you could see last week he just he has a joy he loves doing this kind of stuff he did it for Tyler with that Viper Tower, and and I told him thank you but I just I hate the thought of that but um, at least I do have a, a new tablet the uh, quality is a little bit better and it's awesome to have something that's not cracked beyond belief to where I can't really see what's going on and I do appreciate it. he said well Joe if anything it's a betterment for the show hopefully things will look better and everything so I do appreciate it Nathan. Just I, glad you didn't have to do I, that. I mean, you're welcome. I don't know what else to say. Like, it's it's not. I don't know. I wanted to do that for you. It's Christmas time, and uh, earbuds will be in the mail, bud. Now see, and then he's gonna do that crap. So don't do that. And also want to say hello real quick. Stagnatar, uh, Chris Owens, and Jason Jones also joined us in the chat room. But see, and I hope he really isn't sending head headphones as well. Oh wait, Emma. What's that? Imitational. So, okay. Well, there we go. We got somebody new. Imitational said, there's more you cares than you think. Says, we're only here to see Joe flip his laptop, though. Well, <laughs> yeah, I guess that happens at times when my tablet was falling. And even with my new stand, it's a dollar stand from the Dollar Tree. I hope it doesn't knock this over because I don't want this tablet falling. So, how about that for a rant? Tyler's like, Jesus, Joe, take a breath. <laughs> well, I was going to just say, like, this is a really good turnout. We're two days away from Christmas. I figured people would just be out, like, you know, last minute shopping at different time zones or whatever. I mean, some of you guys, it's already Christmas Eve. So, wow, it's it's good turnout for this. It may good. flop when we're done, though, where we get like maybe like 50 views and that's uh, pretty much it. But <laughs> hogwash. <laughs> it, it's it's going to be fine. Uh, we always have issues with Christmas episodes. Doesn't matter what we're doing, though. <laughs> and we've had James Etock on before Christmas. We've had commentary for uh, the Christmas special. We've had commentary for Ice Age Comics. And people are like, Where's the new toys at, man? And 
you know. Well, speaking speaking of new toys, Joe, you got any got any news? I know I know you uh, finally got around and made out with those hot topic employees and got yourself the the loyal Free subject. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, it was a uh, yeah. I had to do that just to hold on there. Okay. So looks like wait, a bomb wait, wait, just <laughs> hanging over his head. Then. <laughs> hold on a second. Where's the, where's the dumpster? <laughs> like Joe crawls into his cardboard box and hey hey there, uh, Tim. <laughs> Yeah, that's how Joe should make an interest on the podcast. He crawls out of a cardboard box like Damon Wayne's in the living color. With oh, his, like with Anton his Jackson, yeah. Say with the pickle in it. Oh yeah, my with God. the pickle in it. Or and Joe's got like his bag of like gizzards and you know just uh, what what a grand entrance Joe would have. You know that would I should yeah it wouldn't surprise me doing something. But um, what, hey, so well, went, you said they personally called you and they're like they personally uh, called me, which is awesome because. Yeah, the thing is, usually a lot of these stores don't call. I mean, I, I think it's just, you know, it's how you talk with people and, you know, if they're going to be cool about it. But I think there like was I a said, little more to it. I, I, I bet they're like, hey, that, that sexy guy is one of those figures. If, if we give him a call and tell him they're in, he'll, he'll show up and like he'll be here within the hour. Well, they are very nice at that hot topic. I mean, they're very nice. But uh, so modest. So I got a mess. Yeah. So they called and said they got him in. I went in and with their buy one, get one free and some hot cash from relatives. It made them all almost like nothing. I got everything for like under 10 bucks. What one hell of a steal. So that's something Joe can afford. But it's not a super chase, but I did get that uh, Zodak chase. And he's in a purple outfit. I was like, I still don't understand this purple. I was like, what What canon is this supposed to be from? He was never in purple. And I think me and Tyler have uh, seen enough stuff to, I don't get it. But it's still cool. It's a chase one, so I got a chase. And so they're out. They're at their hot, their hot topics now. Those things are selling out super quick wherever they come. They're also different, though. For those who are super collectors, they added knee joints now. So it gives them a little extra height. But also, it, it looks like even their chests are slightly slimmer. And with these figures, their heads look slightly smaller. So some of the people who, you know, like something that all looks like it fits in, just like with classics. Everything's classics. For those who are hoping all the lowest sub subjects would stay the same, this new wave is different. But it's, I mean, it's still cool. It doesn't mean they're crap, but yeah. So there. I got a, ch a Chase Zodak. I thought it was kind of cool. I was like, well, I might even have to sell it, though, because I don't know what they run for on eBay, but we'll see. But, uh... <laughs> now, well, now oh, here's, oh, the th here, well, here's the thing, Joe. Like, If you sell that on eBay, uh, if you can put it back in its box, and if you can sign it, then obviously it's... It's no, we won't be doing anything like that. Also, it's going to be like cool that thing, Honus Wagner baseball card. One of a kind, the, two in the world, maybe millions of dollars. Well, the, the other thing I did want to mention, they're now, okay, they're window boxed, meaning you could see almost all of them, but there's the dark tinted ones that doesn't guarantee you're going to get a chase figure. You could also just like I did open up and you just have Battle Armor He Man, Battle Armor Skeletor, and so yeah. And the Club Twenty Eight I think is One Dar and and uh, Orko. And for some reason, Orko has evil eyes. His O is gone, and underneath as the description of Orko, they called him Snoob. And I was like, well, he sure the hell don't look like Snoob. Tyler and I, we know, and most people here know what Snoob looks like, but I guess that's our way of selling an evil looking variant because it looks just like Orko, just. No O and That's evil lame. eyes. Yeah, it's like Snoob is quite, quite different. But other stores will start getting these, and you will have an Orco with an O. You'll probably have a Zodak with the red armor. It's just each chain will have its own kind of variant color. So just want to bring that up for anybody who does collect these or anything. And even Grimbot's trying to figure it out. He's like, ah. he said, I never saw a purple Zodak. He said, maybe a Brazilian comic or just, hell, maybe just a variant just to sell. You know how things go like that with just weird colored variants. Yeah, I don't know That's... why companies want to do things like that that almost put it in a spot of well, who would want it? Yeah, but it's rare, so people are gonna want it, right? Well, what's the how rare is that Zodak looking to be exactly? Well, like, he's part the... of oh, uh, you know how some are like you know what is it like two and twelve or this and that? I don't know if he's like one in forty eight. King Randor from that run, I think, is one in ninety six. I think okay. one in ninety six. So you got some chases, and of course the gold Orco, meaning only one from this entire run of all Hot Topics. If there's going to be only one golden Orco, and of course if that goes on eBay, that'll probably go for a thousand or two thousand. I think that's what some of those other golds did because they're 
yeah, yeah. It's like the golden ticket from Willy Wonka. Somehow, I imagine you'll you'll like stumble across it. You'll be the one to get it because Wouldn't I actually there be some stuff. Well, I went to Hot Topic today just out of curiosity to see if they had anything. Nah, they had nothing. I, I didn't ask either. There might be something in the back, but the the section that they put all that stuff in was just packed full of things that honestly I don't think people are going to buy. So maybe once they discount all that stuff, they'll put those on the shelf. But I'll, I'll keep I'll keep checking. Okay. I'll pass it to Tyler. I don't know if Tyler had anything to say or, or when we start getting into some of the other topics. No. <laughs> no. It's, it's like, no, that's no. it. That's it. It's I like have nothing done. to say on loyal subjects. I'm not, I'm not forking over the cash or the figures. I just, I just don't... Uh... I, I I don't get excited over that stuff. I yeah, because <laughs> Joe, you just, said at those at Hot Topic were what fourteen ninety nine? Yeah, fourteen ninety nine. Yeah, they're uh, nope, yeah. nope, nope, nope. Uh, yeah, it's kind of tough. I'm a but at least to see, see what you get, you know, I like know, I said, if you, know, it's just dude. I mean, another fifteen dollars, you can get a classics figure for that price. I just felt like this. It's just you know. Plus, I just I actually I the, too much little the stuff regular all over Orko. The place anyway, I yeah, just, I just want the regular Orko because he looks like he's going to be really good in scale, different, slightly different look. And for those who didn't get the Orko for classics, that's really up there on eBay. If when these pop up at other stores as Orko and you could see the Orko, yeah, you can't beat it for fourteen ninety nine. Yeah, but go ahead. But but, but it, it's still kind of. I, I I'm there with Tyler on it. Unless it's, it just feels like a middle finger to fans, you know. It's like God. It, it, next thing you know, they become like little little chibi size, little pocket size, you know, figures about this big, and they want you to pay twenty dollars because like they're rare, but you only get two in a pack, and they're they're wrapped up, and you know, I don't know. I just feel like these these little figurine gimmicks are just getting out of hand instead of giving us quality stuff to put on the shelf, you know. Um. I just kind of feel like everything becomes a lot old trinket size, you know, and it kind of comes off like, you know, why can't we get something, you know, in terms it doesn't have to be exactly something like this, but something a little bit more bang for your buck if you want to slap He Man's face on stuff, you know. I just uh, not to, I don't know. Am I feel like uh, pissing on your parade here, Joe? No, not at all. I will say I was just mentioning it for anybody out there that does want to get them. That I mean, there's a lot of people that like the loyal subjects figures, so I'm letting them know what's out, where they can get them. I probably just need to shut I, up. Then we talk about all the all the current toys so much. I'm like, oh, you know, it's he's uh, like, eh, yeah. But go ahead, you can go into one of our topics, Tyler, if you want to either do uh, Granamere or talk about Danger and Castle Grayskull. But go into what you want first. Oh wait, uh, and real quick, hello to Gene Starwin. Thank you for joining us in the chat room. But go ahead. Joe, I'm talking here. Are you done? <laughs> he's like, I'm, he's like, yeah. What? He's like, don't acknowledge those people in the chat sure? room. Let me you finish. Sure? Eh, I guess. Go ahead. I'll let you go. All right. I say Granamir because uh, the, that was my suggestion. Joe wanted to do Danger at Castle Grayskull, so we'll we'll start with my discussion there. And um, you know, I, I tried to get Joe to do commentary on Dragon's Gift. He's like, well, we've already talked about that like three years ago when when Bozone was on here and. Like Joe, that's like three years ago. Yeah, but it's three years ago, man. I'm like, I don't know why he insists on neglecting the Dragon's Gift commentary. I don't know why he insists on don't j- bouncing around a lot of commentaries. I suggest, you know. But then he goes back and says, "We've done, we haven't done Vengeance of Skeletor, right?" Yes, Joe. We've talked about that. Are you sure? Yes. What about what about Montana? Yes, Joe. We talked about that. Too. Are you sure? Hey, what uh, Goonies? We we did that one, right? I'm like, yeah, we did that one. You suggested it, but then you weren't there. Are you sure? I guess, <laughs> yeah, probably why I forgot because I wasn't there. But I guess that's no excuse. I, I just have a, a horrible, horrible memory. I, Joe, I remember things a, from the it, past, but not what. It's all right. My memory is terrible, too. Yeah, that's why I forget I'm what I did last week. Yeah. Yeah. But, yes, my, my suggestion was, was to, uh, good God, I can't even talk now, discuss Granamir and a character bio, you know, because we've always fixated on like the main roster of characters and. I think we did a character discussion on Shakoti, you know, that uh, flopped. But um, you're all, you're just all worried about the flops now because it pisses me off. You know, where it's just like you know, <laughs> I, I I just like I just want to call people out. Like, are people not tuning in for the um, you know the in depth discussions that we got here tonight? You know, it's just like you know, all right, all right. <laughs> I just, I just, I just like, I feel like this is, it could be a good episode. And it's, it, oh, you're just all hung up on it now and you're just, yeah, you're yeah, just thinking about it too much. 
Oh yeah, I need to just shut the hell up here. Yeah, probably. All right, yes, Grand Grand Amir is our character discussion here tonight because I I think that the character is um, universally beloved altogether from mini comic to action figure to uh, definitely cartoon because that's where he's most notably uh, well are known from. But uh, I just felt that the character warrants a, a full in depth discussion because he's definitely a, a much more um, he's not a uh, a cliche type character. There's there's more to the character um, than a lot of He-Man characters are given. Uh, not to say that there's not fun personalities, but Granamir, from the first uh, from the first time you see him uh, in Dragon's Gift, is definitely written more differently than any any um, filmation style character or a character that's not part of the main roster of heroes and villains. And that's all due to like Larry Detilio writing that. And 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 to it's one of those kind of questions too, like. That was a character that Larry Detilio created, yet shows up in one of the mini comics, and we can't seem to quite bridge the gap in between episodes that were done for Formation and then things that were also turned into mini comics that were also episodes as well too. So I'd be curious to know who at Mattel got a hold of the story. Let's make this a mini comic because they're making it to an episode. You know, I just it's one of those things I've always been fascinated by, but no one seems to have an answer for that. Larry Houston, who worked on the books, wasn't aware that. The books he worked on were also episodes. And Robbie London, I don't think he was really aware as well. Because he did Double-Edged Sword. I don't think he was aware it was a mini-comic. Which was illustrated by Larry Houston. <laughs> it's all connected, but nobody knows how. But um, I love the pompous attitude of Gran Um I really didn't pick up on that as a kid until uh, uh, until I started rewatching it as a young adult when I was in high school. And really started noticing the writing that was given to, uh, given to Gran Amir. And his... Um, and James E. Talk's review of it on the old uh, He-Man She Review website, he put in a lot of details of stuff that I did not notice that are in the episode, especially of Granomir, uh, like being so dismissive of Skeletor's magic, of Manadon's being turned into crystal. Like, that was something that I'm like, oh, wow, I had no, I never had caught that detail about Granomir's personality, being so dismissive of something that Skeletor had done. Like, I don't know who this guy is, but whatever he did, it's poor magic at best. Like, that that attention to detail like gives you a lot more depth to this character of how what he thinks of the outside world, and that at one point he genuinely liked humans and would do things for them without getting anything in return and say, you know what, I've had enough of humans. And one brief uh, time of dialogue that he gives, you just get a great sense of who this character is. Something you don't get a whole lot of in children's animation and a lot of the episodes as well. I'm finished now. <laughs> oh, there. He gave a good introduction. Now he's like, hey, no, I'm finished. Okay. And he takes you off the need... earbuds and he leaves. <laughs> you just need to honestly uh, just start re- referring to yourself in third person. Just be like The Rock. You're idle. Oh, no, I'm not going down that path, man. No, no, <laughs> I am no, no. I am finished now. Uh, no, Joe, I was I was just I, like, I'm not going to say anything yet because, Joe, I think you should go ahead and say what you want to. And then I'll I'll go ahead and hop in with my thoughts. Granamir is somebody that when I first seen him, I mean, it was a frightening character to witness when I seen him in the cartoon. And then he was also a character that just seemed so angry. And like Tyler said, very arrogant and how he just dismissed people. Even like when man at arms, you know, showed up and how he kind of didn't even want, you know, he would like invite a He-Man, but I don't remember inviting you or however he said, I know Tyler would know it word for word, but he didn't even appreciate What was that like bad excuse for a bad manners or what, what did he say? What was that line he said to man yeah, at arms? Yeah, he said, this is my friend man at arms. He wanted to you know, thank you in person. And he's like, poor excuse for bad man. I was like, but I do not remember inviting you. And then points his finger and says, poor excuse mm-hmm. for bad manners. But then when, yeah, Man at Arms yeah. is like nice about it, and Grandmere's like, "All right, well, you speak pretty well." Yeah, because you're you're, you're kissing my ass right now, yeah, so you know yeah. what, you may stay. <laughs> but yeah, but you're just hearing how old he is, like ten thousand years old. And I, like I said, I I loved when we also still got more about him. You know, when he finally appeared and had, you know, he had his four episodes in He Man, but then in Shiro had Dark Smoke and Fire. So it was cool to see that. Shira gets thrown into the past, a thousand years into the past of Eternia, and meets Granamir and, you know, confronts him and talks to him. He has no recollection of who she is. And then he does, like, the thing where he, like, reads her mind and then realizes, okay, now I know everything, but also you're a thousand years in the past. But we get to see a little before, I guess, that whole war started and the real hate of humans, you know, started. The one thing you always want to see was when finally Granamir, you know, excuse me, 
could showcase his powers. Because I always wanted to see a good fight. And was it Shadow Wing he had that great fight with, if I'm not mistaken? As much yeah, as it could I, be? Yeah, and I, I really wish they had done more with Shadow Wing and just yeah. colored him black instead of just using the, the cliche green. Even though the, the, their dragon designs look great, I just wish they'd give him a different color to kind of live up to the name Shadow Wing. Because that was a frightening character, too, when Shadow Wing showed up to see the amount of things he did turning somebody into a frog, turning uh, Torm into a rock, turning into the one guy into a crystal, deflecting things, shooting out electricity. I was like, he was doing a lot, but also to see how, you know, Grandamere would, you know, deflect back that, shooting out fire. I was like, oh, when that fight happened, when he busted out, when He-Man slammed the rim Wind Raider into there, and Grandamere rose up, and they're like, oh, shoot, it. like, here we go, it's on now. You're like, here comes a fight. And it was cool to see. And then, of course, he banished him away, but and Grandamere was somebody that you know, I don't think I would have wanted too much in the cartoon, meaning it would have kind of took away that big, impactful moment each time we got to see him. Like those very few times you've seen him, it was special. But if it was too much, you know, it kind of would almost deflate the meaning and purpose of this such an imposing character. So, yeah, you could almost say, yeah, would I like more Grandamere? I guess maybe, but too much can spoil a good thing. And I think those limited appearances were really well done. Yeah, you got to leave them wanting more. Uh, yeah. I think, honestly, I, I feel like Gran Amir is probably the the best thing like to come from the classics line because that immediately when I would look at Ty Tyler's collection, that that's sort of where my eyes went because obviously, like he's huge. I was like, yeah, it's like holding a little baby in your arms, and I actually, yeah. I actually got the PowerCon exclusive green Gran Amir on eBay, so that should be showing up here with. You know, after obviously after Christmas, but I think before the new year. Um, but yeah, that it, it's just the look of that figure and just the the, the size and the scale is fantastic. But uh, and also and in, into the filmation part of it, I kind of relate to him a lot because I don't really like a lot of people. Period. Like I, I I see the worst in a lot of people. I'm just like, yeah, most humans are just seem kind of. Whatever, but I think one of my favorite lines out of it was uh, when they're thanking him, and he's kind of like, oh, "If you want to thank me, uh, just leave me alone and let me sleep." More or less, and I was just like, "Man, kind of, kind of relate to him a little bit." But I and I, I like how dismissive he is of all the other magics. Like with Orko, he's kind of like, "Well, this is this is real magic. What I'm doing, it's it's cool." I I I like that he is that arrogant, and like Joe said, it's it's good that he only has those four appearances in He-Man and the one in She-Ra because I think anything more than that would start to spoil the character. I am done speaking. <laughs> it's, it's everybody's like, now they take the turn, and I am done, and I am done, and we are done. Goodbye. Boom. Turn off. The podcast is over. But, you know, I, I was only so... Because you guys just sat there like, I'm done. Well, <laughs> usually Joe's pretty good about just like, you know, taking the reins and saying well, what he I... wants to say. It's no, you know me, I ramble like a hundred miles an hour, but I never want to feel like I would cut you off now because as you guys can see, Nathan kind of is basically now part of the show. It's not just a, a bit part here and there, like he's a well, bit I mean, there will be some times where I, I won't be on the show. There, I mean, there might be a part where something you don't want to discuss. I can understand that. Yeah. So now it's like different because, like, I do have to hold. It's like, well, like, I don't want to like feel like I'd run over Nathan if I'd say no. something. It's like no. me and Tyler. I know I'll just we'll go back and forth and just rib each other back and well, forth. Or say you something. do it to me but, all the time on all the other shows. Why not this one, Joe? Well, I, I don't want to insult you too bad. I mean, we know your gameplay <laughs> did suck and all those, but I, I did want to wow. show something. Let me just, let me just I'm, throw that out there real quick. Ah, oh, you thought God. you had Batman Returns beat, huh? You were wrong. Yeah, but, that was great. Hold on, grabbing no, something too. The the good thing, honestly, about becoming more uh, involved with this show is just being as a, a casual fan, more or less. It's kind of helping me grow into something more than that, and it's 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 made me want more, which is like why I'm getting the the PowerCon Granamir. You know, it's why I, I made Axel's uh, artwork like the background on on my phone on the lock screen. I just I don't know. Like I, I, I've always dug it. I've always liked the art. I've always liked the the figures and the look and everything. But now it's like I'm I'm really starting to get into it. And Tyler's just every time he's like, oh, it, oh, it makes me so happy and proud. And 
And that's I said my... just like that, too. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, no, pretty much. Can I tell you a little story about the Grand Amir figure? As Did you know, Eddie John Model. Did you go? No, you do a good day, Grand Amir. Do, 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 shit. But uh, let me tell you a story about Grand Amir. I don't have custom figures that I usually make for myself. I told you I can't afford to do that. But back in the day when I was able to buy Grand Amir, I was like, I love this character too much. And I want another for myself so I can make green Grand Amir. So way before there was an actual green exclusive version, I was, bam, the first to make a custom, you know, custom. But it was for myself because I wanted that mini comic green version. But I, like, would get a little anal about certain things. So when I did them, as you know, the mini comic Grand Amir does not have wings. So I made sure to sculpt away the wings. I also, as you notice, sculpted all the warts all over his tail, like in that mini comic. I did some sculpting and aging underneath his eyes, too. But this is a custom that I've kept just for myself. I've always wanted it because I always wanted that green Grand Amir. I didn't think it ever happened. Of course, you know, there's an official one now. But this one's always staying with me. I had to make that accurate one, the one with no wings and the warted up tail and that more aged, ugly face and... Yeah, this is the only custom that Joe owns for himself is this one right here while my tablet turned on me. So, I can't yep, believe you it. had I can't believe you have two of them and you didn't even offer to give me one. Oh shit, that never happened. But uh <laughs> especially with like I said this, this I had to have the yeah. uh the accurate one from the mini comics. So whenever this came out, I can't even remember how long ago it was. Yep. I was I was the first to pop and make a, a green grand Now don't get that? me don't get me wrong, I would like to have the red one, but I looked at those prices on eBay and I was like, no, no, sir, don't like that. Oh, really? It's that bad? I didn't yeah, know that. Yeah, it's like 300 bucks or more. I'm like, I can't. No, I, I'm sorry. Like, yes, it would look cool to have the red one, but I'm like, all right, the PowerCon one is reasonable enough. I'll go with God, that. God, I one. thought the PowerCon one would have been more since it was an exclusive. I actually did not know that. I really uh, didn't. Unless somehow I managed to get some bootleg figure. <laughs> Tyler, I'll show, I'll show them on the show. The and, yeah, you guys can let me know if I made a poor decision but i don't i don't think it's fake i'm sure it's fine but what about you tyler did you have both of them or you just have the green or red one i just wanted the red one i i just um I, my affinity for the character is all about the red the red grand Amer. i mean I, I if if i came across one that was like you know relatively cheap in person yes but i it's when they did those um first year power con exclusives like red beast man cam Camelcon was the only one that i really wanted i, I never did get around to getting him but i, I just couldn't i just couldn't really justify shelling out another six or seventy dollars for just a color variation. Um, you know, I just I just can't do that. It does look. They like, did at I, least I, give them the. They gave them the uh, buzz off type claws, right? Just like he should be that camo con, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, or what? Yeah, the, yeah, camo con was done right. And I, I would have liked to have had that honestly, but um, I think I, I think when they were, I, I trying to remember the the I think the whole. Whatever it was, it was either like the whole process of trying to get one of those or money was lacking for whatever reason. So I, I never did get the camera con one. But uh, Grand Amir, I thought it was, it was it was a fun nod and a more, a more of a justifiable one, um, more than the Red Beast Man, which I just felt like, I don't know, I, I, I found that to be the laziest of the three, even though he's colored like that in uh, He-Man and the Power Sword. But um um, uh, Green Grand is still cool too, and I was thrilled to death that Nathan w really wanted to get one. Um, so I, I was very happy that he's he's added Grand to his collection, and it, it's slowly, gradually building a little bit more and more. Because I yeah, it's just it's tough with those eBay prices. Like there was a Triclops that I, I was looking at. It's like eighty five, and that's the cheapest one, and it's loose too. Like everything else is over a hundred dollars. I'm like, ugh, I got into this way too late. This sucks. Um. But more and more people are getting into it, like you said, late, and they didn't know about it. And yeah, I think maybe that's one of the reasons the prices are just climbing and climbing is more and more people who just weren't around 10 years ago, however long it's been that this line's been out, you know, they're just now discovering, oh, wow, there was a new He Man line, and they're trying to well, find him. And of well, course that, well, that's the dumb thing, too, because I would go and see Tyler's collection like constantly. He'd be like, yeah, I got these new figures. And I'd be like, yeah, that's cool. But it's just like money thing at the time, too, and just not like, not really wanting at the time to dedicate the space to it. 
And I, I and now that you're taking baths and money, you can go ahead and buy whatever you want because Nathan's just yep. rolling in the dough. He can uh, buy anything he wants. Yep. Check, check your mail, Joe. You're gonna have some stuff coming in this week. And uh, I really hope that's a lie. But go ahead. But, but no. Uh, not only am I adding Grandamir to my collection, but Tyler has been awesome enough. I'm going to be getting Lizard Man and uh, Fang Man in the mail at some point too. So yeah, the collection grows. And maybe I should maybe I should kind of like even though it's like yeah I already got that or whatever maybe I should start when I get new figures to add to the collection show them off on the show or something I don't know would anyone be interested in that if you are let us know in the comments down below or in the chat now people love toy talk on this podcast I mean <laughs> like... well I, well that's that's the that's what I I like that because I haven't you know sat down and just watched every episode of filmation. And to me, it's like the live action movie. And I was like, yeah, the, the classics, honestly, I prefer them over the vintage. I think I've said that before. And, and just the, the art, the mini comics are fun to read. I'm glad that you guys encouraged me to get the book and to start sitting in on these reviews with you. No, and it's good having you on to do that. Cause, uh, like Joe, said, what, it, Joe, what are you doing over there? You just, I keep adjusting. You know what? It's oh, I'm sorry. I'm starting to get worked up again. Um, my cord that's attaching the tablet yeah, like to slowly. my computer. Yeah, it's it's not super long. It's like a little short, and it's it, it needs to be a little stretched out a little bit more and longer. But what it's doing is it keeps slowly pulling the tablet to turn that way. So I'm just gonna unhook it. I think I got enough juice in this tablet. So there, I'm gonna unhook it, turn it, and then now this thing should stop doing its ghost movement. I think. All right. Okay. There you go. Sorry about that. That's another ramble from Joe. Uh, yeah. So how you doing, Tyler? If you were to see Grand Amir remade, like let's say that they brought back, a, they made a new cartoon because obviously we ain't getting it from MYP, you know, since that went away and that's something that people would have loved to see in return. But if they brought back a new He-Man cartoon and if Grand Amir would show up, what would you like as a design to be like pretty much almost like it was, but just, you know, juiced up a little, a complete change or... Because, no, I mean, no, I love his original. I, yeah, and I, I, I mean, I think for the most part, you know, a lot of these characters, they don't need to be changed. It's it's really, I, I mean, it's not just an issue of, oh, you're just stuck on the old stuff. Like, no, they, they we, what this, these characters resonated with us for a reason. Um, you know, I mean, obviously the four horsemen can tweak a few things and add this and change this up a little bit, embellish that. You know, they, they'd be the only people on this planet I would entrust uh, to re, re, redesign or add anything to any of the He-Man mythology. But essentially, Grandma himself, I, I just feel like he doesn't, doesn't need to be tweaked or anything. Like the, a, a dragon with a helmet and small wings that resides you know, in a very large treasure chamber underneath it. And it takes a whole hell of a lot of strength to actually get in there. To talk to him if, if he will even acknowledge your presence like i feel like there's just nothing to change there but just giving giving him more his dialogue is all to me it's 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 so like written so well it's like franklin jello's dialogue in the live action movie like it's not just your basic you know uh wizard like statements like this this guy has a personality a perception on the world around him and he doesn't mind letting you know what I think of you and everyone else. That's not a dragon, like that. That gives you a lot of a, a lot more in depth details of what this 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 guy that doesn't get any visitors anymore. So I, I just I feel like it'd be foolish to change with his visual design because it's such a, it, it, it's it's an original design anyway. I mean, a dragon it is a unique. Helmet. Yeah, exactly. I, I mean, everything you said about that. Not only the helmet, not only the small wings, but his head. As you know, with parts of dragons, they always get that super long neck. They have a very distinct look and a snout out comes. Granamere has none of that. So he stands out with such a unique design that to where I've seen some actually say, it looks like he's a beer gut. Like, no, he doesn't. He has the well, same kind of design as a dragon, except but yeah, he that's the thing. Any... Like he just even the way he sits, too, because you think of most it's dragons. Awesome. Yeah, they're they're always walking like this or, you know, they're sort of just setting up almost like a, a dog. Or something, but for him to just sort of be like sitting there, it's like a person. Yes, and it, but it also adds to his character of like, I am better than everybody. You know, it's just yeah. that laid back, like I know I'm the best. It'd be like if Tyler was a dragon, essentially. 
Excellent, excellent. You know, because you know, <laughs> if if Joe and Nathan decide to have someone else on this podcast, like I didn't invite you on this podcast. Well, I just want to come on and tell you how big your muscles were. Poor excuse for bad manners. You know, I mean, I really could play up the whole granular aspect. You know, I am done talking. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, or if like, whereas Nathan like hates people, like I could be the he man to his grandmother, where like he doesn't want to talk to anybody else except me, because he knows he can trust me, because I'm trustworthy, you know, and I, I I'm the closest looking to he man anyway. So, oh. dear God, this is <laughs> Delvis. You should have drew it different, like we said. Man. But well, I, I'm I'm glad that the bathroom is right there, man. I might have to go throw up after that. <laughs> So, but uh, all right, well, is there any other final thoughts on Granite before we get into a discussion on uh, Danger at Castle Grayskull? Badass character, probably, honestly, I, uh, one of my favorites, easily. I, I just, I, I like the demeanor of the character. I like what he brings to the story, and I, I like uh, just how badass he is. With uh, he can destroy you with, with hardly doing much of anything. And that's 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 real power. I like him. All right, Tyler. Uh, I would definitely say by far the best. I mean, of, of all the characters that that Filmation has just created, I mean, we talk about heavily in you know, the Shakoti and Mask, even Orko, um, Grandamir. Kind of, I mean, I, I would dare say is probably bigger than Shakoti. I mean, because I hold Dragon's Gift. Up, the, it's right there, neck and neck with Evelyn's plot for the like, top episode. I mean, that, that's the writing of that episode by Larry Dottilio. It just, it, it just sticks out so much more higher. That's why I get so pissed off and defended when people want to slam the old cartoon because they clearly haven't watched episodes like the Dragon Skip. Like it's for an episode that's not Skeletor heavy. That's not strictly like you know He Man fighting the forces of evil to save Castle Grayskull. This is you know saving a man's life, but also dealing with someone who's you know, almost like you can almost say like a racist, almost like just ass- assumes all humans are worthless, egotistical, ugly, and all out for themselves. Why the hell should I help you? And he's got some of the best dialogue, and He Man too. Like to me, this is probably he- one of He Man's, if not his most finest episode in terms of how he is written. When you know they come back, they realize they can't kill Sky Tree. And He Man defiantly says, "You know, we don't have it. Sky Tree, in fact, any tree has as much right to life as you or me or Man at Arms. That we won't take a life to save a life." And Grandma just sneers at that, like he's just, you know. And then when he says, "You know, you have every right to send us to the realm of demons now," and it's just like Grandma doesn't know how to react to this because what you're serious about? This is how you really think you're a human. And it says, uh, "You know, I accept your gift." because of your attitude towards this whole situation. You're like, just, it's a complete 180, but it's, it's done just because, you know, he's been blinded so much by, by how humans are. And that's just, um, well, I, w- I wouldn't say that he's been blinded by, it. he's just been burned by it so much that he just gave up. Well, yeah, I mean, it, yeah, I mean, I, I, I see that both ways, you know, I mean, he sees only that because he has been burned. So yeah, I, I just feel like, it just it really hammers home He Man's personality, and by far the, probably the most well written original character in the filmation cartoon is Grand because of how how much of a pompous ass he is in it, and you you just you cling to every word John Irwin says as as Grandamere. I mean it's just plus the his whole setup anyway. This treasure chamber is a story in itself too. Like you kind of feel like is there are these gifts people brought to Grandamere? Are these his personal belongings? Like, it's just something that's never really explored, but it's in every episode that he's in. And it just kind of makes like that's as extra level of mystery to that character. And how deep Dark Smoke is, if he's down there in the bottom of it, you know, resting, what does he do for food? Does he eat it all? Does he, can he eat every thousand years? Just there's so many unanswered questions about the character. You know, people give me the pen, I'll give them a story they won't believe. <laughs> I do like how, uh, I, I, I can't remember because I watched uh, the episodes that you suggested, Tyler. And I I like when He-Man takes the vehicle and he's like, all right, when it's going down and he knows that he's got to like crash it in there because he knows it's going to make Granamir mad and come out and be ready to fight. Yeah, I I like that a lot. (laughs) I I, I, I can relate to that. I'm like, wow, you just messed up something of mine. I'm really pissed off. Who did that? Yeah. He-Man's like, I ain't do it. That that was right over there. That was shadowing. I ain't do nothing. You can dumb and dumber when Jim Carrey's like, Point. Yeah, point right there. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> sea bass, yeah. yeah. But yeah, yeah, this uh see in these it's those kind of episodes that for those who did think that uh filmation and the He-Man cartoon, she cartoon is all camp. It's like again, go back and watch and really see what the cartoon's about because there's absolutely no silliness. I mean the thought of like if Granamir was to be brought back in any style of a new cartoon that might be out and given that kind of silly treatment to a character that was so serious. That would just God talk about a slap in the face. I mean, it's already a slap in the face to a lot of the characters. But God, could you imagine Granamir getting the goofball treatment? It's like no, the cartoon. It's not as silly as people would like to believe. It's like again, that some people say that we're looking through it with like you know nostalgia goggles. It's like not really. Again, you guys might no, it's, not it's, not it's at things. all. And that, that just it's like know, it's they're... not nostalgia goggles. It's really written well, and it has good dialogue and a good story. It's like go back and again. I always said. The stuff you like, you like, great. If you hate, you hate. But it's it's no sense of always just pissing all over back and forth on each other. But just had to say it. Great episode, great character. You gotta love Grand Amir. And of course, within the mini comic dragons gift too. It's it's a great mini comic. So you gotta well, see it. Well, yeah, but, I mean all, all the all the you think about that episode, as Tyler said before, the position that He Man is put in to like in order to save man in arms, he's gotta go and cut this down. And, and essentially kill this tree. I, I don't know. Yeah, it's just uh, it. Uh, there's a lot more to it than people think. But uh, they, it's exactly. It, it's like you said. I mean, even trees. I mean, like I said, it's it's all life, as we've seen in the great fourteen to sixteen minute movie Tree Venge. I mean, you see what happens when you piss <laughs> off trees. If yeah. you guys don't know what we're t- talking about, there's a short film that's out. It's a Christmas movie. It's it's fun for the whole family. You can check it say, out. Uh, yeah, podcast. Joe. Fun for the whole family. Fun for the whole family. It's a great horror Christmas movie called Tree Vents. Just a fun little independent 16 minutes short of just deliciousness. So make sure you guys try to check that out too sometime. I think you'd uh, enjoy it. And then you can give uh, your feedback and say, Joe, I like there. Joe, you're insane, but I like Tree Vents. So. One, of, one of Joe's uh, new Christmas traditions now. As It is. I watch it every year now. So, well, now we're going to move on <laughs> from that. And we're going to go to the record book one of the stories, Danger at Castle Grayskull. So, Nathan, since it would be your first time, I think, obviously, experiencing this story, thoughts? Well, what's the uh, the background on this that you were saying again? That it's uh, this isn't traditional mini comic. This is something else entirely. Well, this wasn't. No, this it's in the mini comic collection book. But no, this isn't a mini comic. This was the record story book that came with ta- you know Point Dread and Talon Fighter which had its two stories, PowerPoint Dread and Danger at Castle Grayskull. Two cool stories, and if you had the record book, I mean, the record that came with it, it just, it was your way of experiencing and listening to He-Man, you know, if you didn't see the cartoon, you know, this was kind well, of your... Well, maybe, they, like, when uh, when you're listening to that record, is it actually using the voice talent no, from the show? No, so so no, we're, no, the, we're just getting, like, really just bootleggy voices well, this on is well, this is what you had before the cartoon you had these audio okay. storybooks record books and- all right so so this is before the the animated show then yes or is yes. it okay all right uh, I'm, I'm trying to like put it in perspective because i'm like if this came out after the fact why did they well, not- see, kind of I know the, the thing same is, time. this came out yeah. 83 the show came exactly. out in 83 also Okay. Yeah, the, it, you can always, again, put it very close, but it's like you could definitely tell by looking at this, this was all written and voiced before the cartoon was done. Even though, like you said, they could probably all have been closely worked at the same time, this is not the whole Prince Adam slash He-Man thing. This is just He-Man. You know, Zoar the Fighting Falcon, you know, is separate from the Sorceress. So, and mus- the mustacheless man at arm. So, yeah. Well, so I got, is, I got, I, you know, intent. I got to, I got to throw out all these questions for all the newbies out there listening to kind of put it, put it in a timeline perspective, but no, like this is a, it's, I, I like how they rope you in with the cover of like, Oh, they're, they're fighting. What, what's going on? And then we get into it and they're like, no, you know, we're just testing out some stuff. I always love how comics would do that. Like they would either leave it on a cliffhanger or you would look at the cover of a book and just be like, what's going to happen in here, but it's a little bit of misdirection. It's like, oh, it's not as bad as it, it looks. Ah, we're just kidding around. But uh, I, well, what's the experience for you guys? Like, Joe, I imagine you, you still own oh, half, comes, half the Oh, the I still have that record book. Okay. Oh, God, yeah, here comes the old man Joe story. I, I, I love these record books anyways. I just 
you know, especially when you just didn't have to just read it, you can hear it and experience. Now, this one wasn't, you know, per se, like, you know, and turn the page or uh, I think it might have been a turn the page one, just like some of the others. It's been a while since I listened to the record, but I just know that I love hearing the music, the sounds that they do, like when Man at Arms and He-Man are doing that fighting, but it ain't real fighting, hearing the clanging of the weapons and those voices. It was cool to hear because you're seeing your characters you love come to life. You know, it might not be animated, but you're hearing the voices. I also remember if distinctively, I thought when Zoar would speak, and I don't know if when Zoar was speaking, if it was supposed to be a voice message from the sorceress or Zoar speaking, because when the voice came, it reminded me of like, you know, it's just this raspy kind of freaky voice that then when I seen the cartoon, you can almost compare to Queen Elmora, how her voice was kind of gravelly. That's the voice that you got from Zoar. And I know obviously Nathan, you never heard that. And Tyler, I know, I think he said he never experienced the record, but I think you did watch it on YouTube later. So did yeah. you remember the voice at all? Yeah. No, no. Oh, so you didn't even remember the voice? Okay. Yeah, yeah it, it was kind of an impression on me. Yeah, see, well, that's the thing. I, well, I was going to say with uh, those record stories, um, I do remember, well, not Master of the Universe, but I do remember other properties and listening to those. And I also remember when they kind of switched over to cassettes and having some of the Batman ones and Justice League ones. And those were, those were always cool to... I, I miss that. I, yeah. I'm surprised they don't... Uh, maybe they still do that in some form or fashion with properties today. Oh, but... it's possible. And I could see Tyler's side, because I know Tyler, of course, experiencing and hearing the Filmation voices, loving it, knowing that's He-Man's voice to him, Skeletor, any of the others, and then listening to these things that were like before and with their voices... I could understand he would be like, this just doesn't sound right. Well, for I mean, me, as, it was just as a kid, exciting. As a kid, I would have been more accepting of it. But as an adult, like, yeah, I, I was. see it as like it was just filling the hole, and that's all I see it as. Not Nothing nothing like those uh, Lady Bird uh, uh, lame, or half-assed uh, recordings that uh, Joe's made me sit through. <laughs> the guy, yeah, just somebody sitting there reading a book and then changing his voice to, eh. And it was like, where's a different type of voice that, yeah, those were kind of a little bit painful, but hell, maybe those people that when they heard those, were doing backflips. I don't know. Maybe they were loving it. No, I don't think so, Joe. But He's like, probably not, Joe. I'm not sure. I was like, okay, I'm time to pull the UK fans. Hey, they, they had it, filmations, but... he meant, in the UK. You going to sit there and tell me that they preferred this guy, to, you know, puffing on cigarettes? In oh, not prefer. Syllable? Just you never know what somebody might have uh, experienced first. That's all I meant. I didn't know <laughs> if they might have. This person could experience the Ladybirds before the cartoon. Some people, hell, I know a lot of people that only enjoyed the, the comics. Some of the countries, I think they said they even had the comics or mini comics. And I mean some of the later ones that you could say even were around the time of filmation. They seen those and didn't even get to see the cartoon till years later or through weird ways of renting. So everybody's got their different experience. I like how Joe kind of says it like, like in a very mocking manner. Like everyone's got their own experience, Joe. No, but you know what I mean? It, no, everybody does have a different way they experience something. So you just, uh, yeah, you never know. It just depends on the part of the world and age. But I'll pass it to Tyler. It, it's, is anybody else getting it? That it seems like Tyler just seems kind of sad today or something. Tyler seems depressed. I hope he didn't get kicked in the nuts or something bad today. I don't want to <laughs> ask. I don't like doing the personal. But something seems kind of, mm, he feels like the grumpy Granamere. Mm, I do, I I do feel know. like a bit of a grump here today. Yeah, you do. You sound like it. I can hear it in your voice. Tyler's just like, Ugh. it's like, yeah, okay. All right, is the podcast over, guys? All right, see you next time. No quote this time. I do. I do have to make sure I get a quote down. I always have like quotes during the week. I'll use it on the podcast. Then when it comes down to it, like, I had like four or five quotes, and I don't remember a single one of them. <laughs> so much dead air on this episode, Jesus. Man. I know, God, man. Right before Christmas, too. Well, we'll get down to the bottom of why why Tyler's uh, being kind of sad, but uh, let's go ahead and, and and jump into the story. It's basically Man at Arms is uh, he he's working on some stuff, and he's like, "Hey, let's let's go ahead and take the what is the attack track?" Yeah, which yes, uh, man. So it's I feel like I'm already fumbling through this because you guys like know this probably. You probably don't even have to look at it. You probably just visualize it in your I like head. How, I like PowerPoint Dread better than, than Danger Castle Grayskull, though. Even though Triclops is in it. Um, I, I just like the Point Dread story a little bit more. What a voice from Triclops in this one. Oof. 
That is interesting. Such a very robot. It's almost like a robotic voice. Do you remember it at all, Tyler, or no? No, no. I think oh. I just was listened to it one time, and that was it. Yeah. I mean, I always, as a kid, I just enjoyed the piss out of it and everything and Skeletors, but I, I just remembered a lot of the characters, they had this voice to where it almost sounded like they were speaking to like a tin cup. It was, it was just weird. But yeah, the whole thing was Zoar, which also, man, there's some people that get real touchy when it comes to the name of Zoar because from film, you know, excuse me, filmation, we all, we clearly hear Zoar, you know, but when it comes to the, the audio ones and a lot of these, you hear Zor like a roar. So, Man, I, I've actually seen that in groups where sometimes people were like getting pissy back and forth about the pronunciation. I was like, Jesus, I didn't mean to bring it up because I brought up one time when I heard somebody saying Zor and I was like, are you like it like the roar or are you like Zor? And like, no Zor. And then boom, it exploded. More little perks to Joe being in a lot of different groups. I see a lot of crazy things. Was this uh, one of those discussions whale? where you like instigate the, you know, like, what do you guys oh. prefer, <laughs> Zoar or Zor? And then if I do, uh, D- Joe goes in with his little, what I call masters of the universe bomb. I just set it there and just see if it's going to explode. I just want to see when everybody's touching it, touching it, and then boom, it blows up, and then everybody loses it. <laughs> and who that whale? Thank you for joining us. And go ahead. Oh, well, I, I, Devil is saying, Tyler, uh, Beefcake isn't really dead. He was just kidding. He didn't mean to bum me out by that. Maybe maybe that's what it is. But I was uh, say, Nathan was the one that got pissed off about that, not me. <laughs> well, you know, uh, Beefcake sucks. Anyway. So, uh, uh, Man in Arms and He Man decide they're going to take the the Talon Fighter, which leaves leaves her with the uh, the attack track, and that, that's basically what sort of sets up this whole trap that Skeletor's had, because she runs into uh, Manny Faces, and he's kind of being controlled, and he he turns into his his beast self and starts to go after, her, and that's when Skeletor comes out and unveils this plan. Joe, are you laughing? But I'm laughing because I'm thinking of that roar, the kind of this roar that Manny Faces Oh, did. yeah, you're, you're going back and thinking about, like, the, the audio that you... Yeah. I'm, I'm going oh, to I'm, I get, I'm gonna have to check those out just to see how I feel about I just, them. I used to love, like I said, I'd play the piss out of it when I was a kid over and over, like, at nighttime and then have the flashlight on the book, just like you see in movies. But I did, damn it, I just loved hearing that. But now that I hear, think about some of the things, oh, what a, what a voice for Manny faces when he did his kind of roar, in which you didn't really see the beast. Well, you heard that, you know, the beast came out, but you still didn't see the beast face. You're just usually seeing the yeah. regular face. I also like how Skeletor, you know, basically predicting, he's like, yeah, I knew that they'd have Tila be left behind. I was like, what is this? I mean, it's just, it was kind of strange the implication that, you know, it's always going to be He Man and Man Arms that take, you know, the real good vehicles and eh, leave Tila to lag behind. It's like, it just sounded strange to me, but it, I guess, it worked into his plot of capturing her. Well, it, well, they want to take the attack track, but it kind of pulls a Batmobile and smoke comes out, and Skeletor's just like, all right, we'll just leave it there. Which I, yeah, I thought that's was kind of. Smoke yeah. scream. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. yeah. Well, I thought it was uh, it was just kind of funny, like how quick he was to just give up on that. But yeah, we we reach it to where Skeletor's talking to Triclops, and I I guess I'm just gonna have to listen to this and hear that voice because you said it's it's pretty bad. This very robotic. Yeah, and I think JSP in the chat room did say if you want, you could find this on YouTube. Yeah, he, with, said, he said they're on YouTube. Yeah, so I'll, I'll when we're done with the show, I'll I'll look it up and listen to it and kind of follow along and just. Probably laugh at it. I I feel like I'm going to. I feel I'm like thinking, it's, no, you probably will. I'm sh- I'm sure you will. But, yeah. uh, but go to, ahead. To be fair, granted, you know the the animated series had not premiered or taken off yet, so they didn't really have much to go off of other than the words here on the page. So you can't. And plus, really... you're getting to look at this beautiful art again. For those who just love Alcala's art, I mean, you are just getting some beautiful. I mean, every panel could be its own little piece of just beautiful art to frame and remember since this is bigger and not so small in a mini comic since the bigger book you can see the details more and obviously a little more freedom to do stuff and not just have some things in the background be quick little drawings not saying nothing like that doesn't exist in this book as well but very big pictures clean clear and just more beautiful stuff of alcala and especially if you want PowerPoint Dread, you can finally see Zodak, you know, drawn in Alcala's form since we didn't get him in a mini comic. It's like, that's a plus. But go ahead, Nathan or Tyler or somebody. Poor Nathan. Uh, Tyler, oh man, I feel so bad for Tyler. He is, I, I really don't want to ask because I'm I, not I just going to. Don't, I, I do, I'm kind of having trouble finding stuff to say about this story, though. Like, Why is that? I, that's kind of amazing for me, really. I just. Uh, like I said, I, I just 
don't have a whole lot to say in general about it. Um, <laughs> I, mean, I, really I can tell. Don't. This is... I just, I just don't. It's, it's. Well, it's, let, it's, let, it's, let's say this: Is he more speechless now, or when I gave him the Viper Tower? Because I feel like now he's, he, he has a lot less to say. He looks depressed. He looks out of it today. He really does. Yeah, you had a, you had a bad, Joe, you had a bad pick. We'll just, we'll blame it on Joe. <laughs> Oh, God, no, it ain't a bad pick. I've never heard anybody say, oh, Danger Castle Grace, I don't like it, or it sucks, or Joe, you're a dipshit for picking it. I I've never experienced that. Everybody that's ever that, that I've known has always liked the – I'm not saying – Tyler's saying it sucks completely, but – Well, yeah, they, you yes, you are. Yes, you are saying that. I, said, I don't have much to say on it. Like, it doesn't resonate with me. All right, well, well, yeah, yeah. well, we'll keep going here. So, basically, Skeletor is taking control of Tila, finds a way uh, to be like, hey, you know, you go up – you." Tell them to open up Gray Skull. So they they infiltrate it, and I, you guys might have to explain this to me just a tad. And I, I know this is before the animated show, but Skeletor makes it a point to say, "Remove your super suit." So yeah. obviously, this is established. Like the, the sword in the mini comics, yeah, the he sword had the didn't, one there wasn't really like he, it's just him just having the strength. It has nothing to do with. The, there does yeah, two different vests. Yeah, I mean, okay. in the original, I mean, the first four mini comics, you see his power and his force field vest. So he had two different type of vests. One that's like kind of a protector, and one that would like increase his strength. So they obviously, since this is you know early stuff too, and at least kind of on lines of the story, yeah, they want to mention the vest being okay. his power harness. Yeah. All right. So he, th they're basically locked up in a cell, and and Trap Jaw has been. Uh, assigned to watch over them and he's sitting here kind of like joe's already said shit on this show i've been good about my language on this one but joe's kind of throwing it out the window a little bit sorry i apologize <laughs> so you know trap jaw is just kind of giving him shit it's like ah you're in there so he man throws throws water on him he's like ah you know what'd you do that for i'm just gonna stay here and hang out and basically what that what that does is uh trap jaw gets rusty and that, that yeah, gives him up yeah, Russ's it gives him... jaw, Russ's arms, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then uh, meanwhile, you know, Skeletor is trying to figure everything out, and Triclops, Beastman, and Merman are just kind of bumbling around and ruining everything. And Triclops, what's this lever? And he falls through the floor, and Skeletor is probably just holding his head like Joe does when he gets frustrated. And uh, which right. honestly, this ends up once uh, they get the keys from Trapjaw. I, I think my favorite part of the whole thing is just uh, this part right here. Like just the shadow, it reminds me of something like out of Kill Bill, you know, when the bride's about to to fight him and it goes blue and everything. That's yeah. what that really reminded me of. So I, I like that part a lot. And then uh, they're just kicking ass. They're just beating him up, and then <laughs> Skeletor just he he really gets it. Like he he starts getting attacked by everything. He's outside the castle now, and then the vehicles do have a mind of their own, like Man in Arms had alluded right. to earlier, right. and they start just like throwing all their stuff at him, and they have to scurry off and run away. Yeah, the tech track did have his little mind of his own to get him to get get the hell out of there at the end. But, no, it is. it is. It's a good story. If nobody's ever read it, you can obviously get that gigantic mini-comic collection book to read it, or check it right on YouTube so you can at least look and listen to the insane different type of audio that some people got the experience back then, and you might think, God, this is uh, bad voicing, but... Eh, you might enjoy it in hell for those who do remember. At least you can have a little, you know, memories brought back by it. Because I'm sure there's not many people that still have a record player to pop up, put in the old record, and zoom, turn it on. It's not usually going to happen. So I mean, record, way, hey, I guess, hey, record players are coming back, man. The vinyls well, are have, vinyls are everywhere now. Barnes and Noble, yeah, Target, Walmart. So that. yeah, I'm sure someone could get a record player and obtain one of these and. Throw them oh, on sure. Them. I mean, I've seen the record player slash CD player slash tape player. It's like a gigantic combo thing that they sell at places. So, yeah, I need to get that, and they need to get some retro VCRs out there at a cheap price so I can get back popping in some of my tapes that I haven't seen in years. But, well, yeah, that, that's that, what like we can do. You can go to Goodwill and find a copy of Roadhouse and watch it, and then we can yeah, find this, we'll talk about it. Yeah, exactly. I think that's the only way to do it. But, We'll see if anybody has anything that they want to ask in the chat room before we wrap it up. And uh, I don't even know if you guys have anything that you're going to want to ask because I might answer it. Nathan might. I don't know about Tyler because I think Tyler is about ready Tyler's to be about done tapped here. out. But, I, I do want to throw out if they redo He-Man and Granamere's in it. Obviously, we know who's got a voice, Granamere, right? 
obviously. I'll leave it at that. Take it away, there Joe. You go. All right. <laughs> well, again, if anybody does have anything you want to ask us right now in the chat room, whether it's coming to mini comics, cartoons, the movie, the toys, whatever, do it right now while I pass it to Tyler to see if maybe he has anything in closing. Not quite sure if it's going to happen this week, but Tyler? I don't know why Joe is so like frustrated that you know that I, I'm not as fixated on the story, though. No, not frustrated. The whole episode, even from the beginning, you've seemed quiet. So I'm hoping everything's okay. But go ahead. No, I just, um, you know, I guess just because it's hard for me to get excited over the, like the, the 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 little figurines and stuff like that. I just don't have as much to say on that kind of stuff. Period. I know I know Joe has his reasons for doing. it. I just don't have anything to bring to the table on that stuff. And then uh, with this story, I just I just don't get as excited about it as I do like some of the other mini comics, though. And it's not because of a I didn't grow up with it because a lot of these things I didn't get to experience till I got older. Anyway, I just I find I like the the scenery. I just don't enjoy the story as much. It's not a bad story. It's not like Obsolesque or uh, Obelisk, excuse me, or the Leech mini comic or anything like that. I just don't have as much to say on it because of it's it's a simple story. But I just don't have as much excitement for it, so to speak. Um. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, now I'm going to pass it to the chat room. Uh. Fedmon wanted to say something. Fedmon said the purple Zodak armor is an homage to the first Master of the Universe Classics weapons pack, which uh, had that. Oh, I, you know, I couldn't even remember the Classics weapons pack. I just know the vintage, the originals, where it was the black Zodak armor. Yeah, so I was going to say that. That's actually not enough. I was the wrong color. Yeah, I was going to say if if it's uh, yeah they did something for the Classics version. I honestly don't remember, but thank you for saying that. So I guess now we kind of know that. Um, let me see. Uh, Adam Gabbard said, Joe, Tyler, Nathan, how come Queen Marlena was never made into a vintage figure for the 80s, but we got her one in classics? Well, I know that they were a little skittish at times of probably thinking, oh, will a female figure sell, which we bought every one of them, loved them. But I think since we got King Randor towards the end of the line and you wondered, well, Queen Marlena, I think she was maybe in the works or thoughts of being made, but... The line, unfortunately, was canceled, so we didn't get her. But I'm sure, hell, if they would have made a Queen Marlene, I would have bought a Queen Marlene. I bought every damn figure. I didn't have an issue with her being a female. She would have fit in fine with the vintage figures, I think. I think she would have, too, but I just I just don't think by that point that they were really going to push too many. I mean, we got three females throughout the entire line. Um, I think having a, a royal female character probably, because I feel like what would be her, other, other than, like, I, I mean... She wouldn't have much of an action feature, probably. No. You know, and neither did Tila, but I kind of feel like Tila's a warrior. Evelyn's a warrior. The sorceress is the sorceress. The queen is just, you know, the queen. And you kind of feel like. Just nice well, to display with King Randor, I guess. Pretty like, much. Yeah. Yeah, or just yeah. use her as like somebody that Skeletor captures. And, you know, when you're playing around, you have to pretend like you're going to go rescue her or something like that. Hell, like even thinking of the classic figures, you know, she's got the two ways you can display her, but when she's in her, you know, gown, it's like. You can't pose her or do nothing. It's basically just stand there right next to King Randor. It's like, can't it, she's a cool display piece. Yeah. Just like a lot of the figures. Some people don't like, yeah, they're cool to display, but maybe not to play. Right, yeah, there you go. Cool to display, but not to play. All right, I like that. Okay, um, let me see. Uh, I, I could see okay. that being a case, too, of just uh, knowing you want to prioritize a lot of characters over some of the other ones, even if they do have more appearances in the show, and then by the time you get around to it, it's it's too late. Like you said, it was probably in the works and everything, but it just every the, the timing of it didn't work out, I guess. I would have yeah, no, thought probably. though, like would would there have been evidence, you know, because we got, you know, the Errol McCarthy artwork of characters that were coming down the pipeline for the next wave. But was anything shown up for a Queen Marlena figure? You know, um we gotten Hot Shot slash Plasmar, Lord Grasp, Terror, uh uh Slamurai, and the the horde troopers in the uh, with the snake heads but you know that really hadn't seen anything evidence what 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 I, I i'm looking at the chat i'm not laughing at you oh i'm laughing at the stuff the chat's saying okay. sorry about me or joe no I, I, all right if you really want to you really want to know why not it said most of the golden girls look a lot like skeletor by now too crossover potential <laughs> i'm just like oh god i didn't need to know that <laughs> see I thought and, it was uh, funny. 
Fedmon did want to bring up something as well. Fedmon said, also, the smaller Ladybird books had multiple voice actors. The big six story books was the only one with one voice actor. He said the audio is on YouTube if you ever want to listen to them. So thank you for that, Fedmon. I mean, I've read all those individual books, but I've never heard those little individual ones voiced out. It was, yeah, you're right, just the big one that um, we did that one time. That No, yeah, twice. That was, that was a doozy. Twice. Yeah. Yeah, that, that was a doozy, but um, all right. But, yeah, I think that's it. So, uh, well, again, well, I well, want to thank uh, – like, Who that well asked if we're ready for Christmas? Are you guys ready for Christmas? Oh, did he say that? Oh, sure, <laughs> sure. And I did want to say it to anybody out there that celebrates Christmas. Hope you have a Merry Christmas. Anybody that celebrates Kwanzaa, I hope you have a Happy Kwanzaa as well because we have both these coming up, 25th for Christmas, 26th starts Kwanzaa. So for everybody out there that celebrates the holidays, any of those holidays, I hope you have a merry one, a happy one. And if you don't celebrate them, I just hope you have, are happy in general or have a good day. But yeah, go ahead. Uh, I, well, I was looking for Zentron's quote. I didn't see Zentron's movie quote. You're going to have to throw it up there, Zentron. I must have missed it because I know there's been a lot of bam. It's just, it's been going quick. I have not been able to keep up with it because I've been trying to look back and forth and holding my microphone so it doesn't rub myself or something. So. Yeah, I, I missed your quote. We're going to have to see that quote again. So, uh, But I, let me at least say some of the closings in case he puts that up there. I'll say the closings right now. Anybody new to the chat room, go ahead and make sure you like, subscribe, ring that bell, because when you ring the bell, you're always notified when you have new content. So you can always uh, yeah, catch us when we're going live. And, of course, as I always say to everybody in the chat room, it's always great. I'm glad you're here. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope to have you here next week. And I didn't catch your quote there, Zentron, so I'm sorry. So until next time. Have a powerful day. Are you mocking me with that outfit? I love some Cousin Vinny. That's what the judge said to Vinny. Yeah, I love that damn movie. So, see you guys next time. All right.